Once the world was big, and no man in his lifetime could circle it. Through the centuries, science has made man's lifetime bigger and the world smaller. Now the farthest corner of the earth is as close as a push button. And time has lost all meaning as man-made devices speed many, many times faster than sound itself. Here, near the top of the world, free men struggle with the elements to create some measure of defense to protect that self-same freedom. Distant early warning radar, sensitive electronic devices to detect the presence of objects in the sky, including bombing planes and guided missiles, and rain clouds and homing pigeons. New radar installations must be calibrated by the flying of controlled test flights to check the accuracy of the equipment and to chart a detection profile of the area in order to pinpoint blind spots the radar cannot penetrate. Bravo 8035, Angels 9. Bravo 7540, Angels 9. Bravo 7045, Angels 9. Test flight. Test flight. This is Snowman 3. Give me a reading. Over. Snowman 3, this is test flight. Flying vector 340 degrees from IP. Angels 10. Speed 400. How do you read me? Over. Everything checks for the altitude, Mitch. We read you at Angels 9. Altimeter reads 10,000 on the nose. Better check the level on the antenna mount. Roger. How about Mademoiselle Mathematician? She got enough numbers to feed into her machine yet? Do you have all the information you need, Miss Caldwell? One more run, please. Low level coming in. One more, Mitch. Vector, 105 degrees, low. Roger. Turning 180 degrees, low approach. This is test flight, over and out. I didn't know pilots were allowed to do things like that. Not Air Force pilots, you're right. But Mitch is an electronics engineer. He may work for the government, but man, he kind of makes his own rules. Well, so does a three-year-old child until his mother spanks him. Mother, dear mother, I'm ready if you are. I uh, must have left the switch on. An electronics engineer, a radar officer, a mathematician and systems analyst, a radar operator, a couple of plotters. People doing a job well, efficiently. Serious, having fun, doing a job. Situation, normal, for the moment. Date, the 17th of the month. Sky, cloudy, overcast. Visibility limited. Time, 1332 hours. A significant moment in history. The moment when an electronics engineer named Mitchell McAfee saw something in the sky. Something that was almost the beginning of the end of life on this earth. McAfee recorded instantly by radio the sighting of a UFO, an unidentified flying object. The radar officer replied that it was impossible. According to the radar scope, except for Mitch's plane, there wasn't a single solitary object of any nature whatsoever. Nothing in the sky for a radius of hundreds of miles. McAfee didn't care what the radar showed or didn't show. He knew what he saw with his own eyes, and he was determined to get a better look. McAfee turned, and so did the unidentified flying object heading toward him. There was no mistaking the urgency in McAfee's voice. Something, he didn't know what, but something as big as a battleship had just flown over and passed him at speed so great he couldn't begin to estimate it. In national defense, it's better to be safe than sorry. The alert was sounded to scramble interceptors.
Well? Well what? Well, let's not play games, Major. Did you men find it? Mr. McAfee, if you were in uniform, I'd have you under arrest and facing general court-martial charges. Unfortunately, you're a civilian, and I can't touch you. What are you talking about? But I about? can send a report in on you, and I will. By the time I get through with you, Mr. Electronics Engineer, you'll be lucky if they let you test batteries for flashlights. Look, Major Bergen, I was flying a final calibration flight. I spotted a UFO, I reported it. Does that make me a criminal, a traitor to my country, or some kind of a psychopath? McAfee, you're an electronics man, an expert on radar. Sure, that's what they pay me for. If there was something in the air, something flying that you could see, would radar pick it up? Well, yes, Would but radar they... pick it up, yes or no? Yes. There were three radars on you. Every minute you were in the air, not one of them, not one, saw anything but you. Look, and Major... You were told this, you knew it. Nevertheless, you persisted with your little joke. Easy now, Bergen. You continued to yell wolf until somebody pushed the panic button and scrambled a flight of interceptors. Great. Great, so your buzz boys flew around, they couldn't find anything, so now you're mad and want me to pay for the fuel they burned up or the time they wasted or something else real smart. The flight was scrambled and dispersed to cover as wide an area as possible. And thanks to your not-so-funny false alarm, Mr. McAfee, one of those planes didn't come back. Plane and pilot both are missing. Major Bergen. What? Yes. Yeah, yes. Call out the standby crews. You better reshuffle your duty rosters. There'll be plenty of sweat on this one. Look, Major, I'm sorry about the pilot, but... That was no false alarm. Oh, come me. off. Admit you've done enough harm with your flying battleship. Just, just let it... Just a moment, Miss Caldwell. That call. A Transpolar Airlines plane is reported overdue and missing. Oh, no. Sixty passengers and a full crew aboard. We got a distress call from the pilot, and nothing. No more contact. Engine trouble? No. The pilot yelled something about a... a UFO. And the radio went dead. And our radars? Nothing. Nothing but the transpolar plane, alone in the sky. Well, we're finished up here, Major. Is our transportation ready? Plane and pilot to the field. Fly you straight through to New York. Thanks. Let's do it, Sally. We'd have it soft all the way into New York. Seems to be a local front, Mitch. How about flying over it? Can do. Wait till I call in. This is Air Force Zebra Love 7979 calling New York International Airport. Over. Zebra Love 7979. This is New York International Airport. Over. Altitude 8,000. Airspeed 250. Meeting unexpected storm activity at Adirondack region. Request permission to change altitude to 12,000. Over. Zebra Love, 7979. Permission granted. Over. Zebra Love, 7979. Roger. Out. Like I said, no sweat. Thanks, Pete. I'll put in a good word for you with the Major. Oh, thanks, Lowe. <laughs> 